Oh, right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody, and welcome to another WTL cast here between Rainer up in the top right side of the map representing Kaizy Gaming. And we've got some very interesting Terran Versurg strategies coming out because he is playing against the creative mastermind himself. And it is in the bottom left representing Sidestorm Gaming, a Gumio. Oh, Pig didn't time it out properly. There we go, Gumio. Many call him Gumi Bro, one of the most creative players of all time. Won a GSL back in 2017 with the old Battle Cruiser, and oh my god, is his webcam pixely. <laughs> and his body's phasing in and out of existence. I mean, Rainer's camera isn't the most perfect thing of all time, but right now, Gumio is in Dark Templar cosplay on that camera. That is the funniest thing I've seen in a while. <laughs> <laughs> the webcam is like just way too close and not focused <laughs> and they're trying to green screen it as well but i don't think he's got a green screen behind him so i think they just try to use a filter to like cut out stuff in the background and it just looks looks like some sort of morphing creature ah uh, anyway command center first did a double gas for grooming her hopefully for rainer's sake he doesn't build uh zerglings at the start and just goes straight drones uh depends if he expects the command center first or not but safety zerglings absolutely not required here now what's fascinating is gumiho is a creative mastermind oh sh shizzle sorry guys do i have double music on oh yes i do sorry audio <laughs> gobble what what just happened i accidentally jumped the video to somewhere else in the video guys this is Oliveira, host girl, and caster. Is that F91, guys? I'm really bad at remembering casters of other, of other languages. Did I jump to a completely different video? I'm sorry, guys. I don't want there to be too much audio garble. We'll just reintro the whole thing. I, I'm sorry. All right, guys, going into an awesome match. We've got Rainer in the WTL representing Kaizy Gaming in the top right side up against Gumio. This is, of course, from the playoffs. Gumio representing Sidestorm Gaming, the uh, playoffs of the last season. And it's a highlight match, which I haven't had a chance to cast, which had some very fun strategies. And you know why? Because it's Gumio, a.k.a. Gumi Bro, the man who apparently is morphing into a dark templar I actually did a full start of this cast just a moment ago i was cracking up for a good two minutes straight at what has to be the worst webcam quality i have ever seen he's literally phasing in and out of existence his whole body is a blur amazing amazing gaming there on gumiho's webcam but gumiho is going command center first into barracks and uh knowing gumiho he is the lord of the mech but he actually doesn't play mech that much in this matchup. I feel like it's like one in three games. But on this map, it is basically custom made for battle mech. Big wide open spaces, Cyclone and Hellion, real mobile units are going to be so darned effective. Um, so <laughs> we'll see if Rainer skips the Zerglings. That would be key. If he skips Zerglings, you don't need them against the command center first because the barracks is so late. So even if Gumio builds a Reaper... If Rainer just builds drones, he will be getting a much better position. Depends what he's anticipating from his opponent. Now, obviously, two-port BC, something that Gumiho is a god at. Uh, just straight-up Cyclone Hellion mech, Cyclone Hellion Banshee battle mech, the really mobile style. He's really good at all of these. And these are styles that Rainer, sometimes he crushes them if he gets a good start and a good read on it. But if he can't figure out what they're doing, sometimes he does struggle a little bit. And we've got that factory going down. So it is Reaper into factory... And the Overlord's going to scout around that left side, see what he can find. Looks like Rainer, I think he skipped the Zerglings. So that's... Oh, it looks like there's something going across the map. He built at least two Zerglings then. We're not really getting a shot of it right now. Of course, I'm not controlling the camera in this. This is all cast off what was a clean feed. It is now a video of that feed. Overlord speed. Okay, Rainer does this every game on this map. Overlord speed, ZVT. He always does it here because he knows the Terran like to do cheeky build orders. But check it out. Third command center coming down. So mega greedy build for Gumiho. And you know what? Overlord speed's an expensive upgrade to get this early. So you might be like, well, he's way behind. Rainer is. However, keep in mind, Rainer skipped Zergling speed, right? So he skipped Zergling speed. And that's a big issue. If you're going to get big Hellion run bys early, in this case, the Hellions are only now starting as the factory lands on the reactor. 
And uh, I think Rainer should be able to get away with that very delayed Zergling speed just fine. Behind it, I assume this is the old three command center mech for Gumio. Gumio used to play this a lot. It's very vulnerable to like Roach Queen drop timings. If you do a German taxi or anything like that. Overlord's going to see everything here. You know, this Hellion's building two at a time. A super fast third command center. And these Overlords can just keep going in loops around this base. There's nothing that shoots up at all for Gumio. I mean, he better build a Marine or something. Just so that Rainer doesn't get to... Look at this. His Overlords are literally on patrol paths. Like, I see you. Gumio's going to go Cloak and a Viking. Very cute there. Going to try and prompt Rainer into going Quick Lair and Spore Crawlers but then clearing out these overlords eventually with the Viking. And it is basically an economic arms race to see who can rush up to three or four bases. And that's when we're going to see the fighting start to happen. A few Hellions are on the right side of the map, but as I said, Ling speed is almost done as these arrive. He could try to dive. There's a small chance. I mean, you know there's overlord speed, which is a greedy opponent from your opponent, opening from your opponent. Hellions take a little damage, as does the Queen. He's going to back off. Viking will take out at least one overlord in the main base. Marine pops out as well. He starts Stim there. But that was a sh yeah, that was a show. I was like, he starts Stim under the Overlord. Hmm. I wonder if Reyna bought that or not. Because he just showed him Stim, killed the Overlord, and then immediately cancelled it, lifted the barracks, and built a second and third factory. Overlord's coming in for the confirm. Can he deny it? The Viking needed to micro there. Okay, that, that Overlord got killed in time. The Overlord got killed in time. And Rainer does not know what he's up against. If Rainer knew, we'd see a Roach Warren go down right now. Because he's going to be up against a lot of Hellions, a lot of Banshees, and Cyclones. And this could be huge. Oh. Okay. Interesting question from the live audience. Is that Supply Depot Reactor Wall-Off more advantageous to the standard one? That is the standard Wall-Off, I believe. Oh, let me take a look. I'll, I'll take a look. Oh, if it's two depots on one side... Maybe protecting the reactor might be the euthermal wall off. Ah, it's the euthermal wall. I think euthermal likes this one as well. Yeah, yeah. I think it's basically so that you have a wider entrance to move in and out of your base. It's uh, also something where basically with that depots like that, um, banelings, if they do come in, they can't kill your reactor and all your depots at once. So there's a few different reasons. I think there might be another reason as well. But uh, not a massive difference either way. Another Overlord does go down. Rainer, I think, now should know that it's Battle Mech, but we still don't see a Roach Warren. Didn't that Overlord just confirm that it was Battle Mech? He just saw factories, didn't he? Why is he not dropping a Roach Warren? Rainer, what is going on? Sorry, guys. Looked like there was a bit of a frame rate drop. They really should turn off the snow effects if the computer observing can't handle it. <laughs> you can see the frame rate's not great on the recording right now. Could be a recording issue either way. Hopefully that cleans up. This is not an issue on my PC, just in case you guys are wondering. I've got a brilliant frame rate, but the feed is what it is. Hopefully it cleans itself up over time. Those snow effects sometimes do add a crazy uh, amount of CPU, uh, but we'll see how it goes. That's a lot of cycling. He's, wait, okay, guys, Rainer knows what's happening, and he is choosing to play Lingbane Muta. Oh, Rainer. For those who don't know the tale of Rainer, Rainer is one of the cockiest Zergs out there. Some say he's arrogant. I think he's cocky in a good way. I think it's fantastic. He's got a lot of charisma and, and, and he's very confident playing out there strategies. But he was famous for claiming you could beat Mech with Ling Bane Muta and you didn't need anything else. You didn't need to build a single Roach ever. Uh, he was so adamant about this. He played a show match where Marine Lord 3 0'd him. Even though he knew he was going to play mech every game, Marine Lord just hard counted it, showed how to shut it down with that mech play, and Rainer had to eat his words. Yet he's trying it here again. He loses eight drones. The Zergling's getting roasted by that fantastic Hellion micro. The Banshees did get shut down, though, and Rainer's still at 75 workers. So he holds that A-OK. -okay. Fourth command center starts behind it. Blue Flame, Magfield, and Double Armory are on the way, but all after, I believe, five factories might be up now. Yeah, he's building an extra reactor in Tech Lab, so up to five factories, he's going to go mass muted. Now, this is amazing, because I have been asking for a long time for people to show us what does mass muter versus the new cyclone look like. It used to be muters could always surround heavy cyclone styles, but Magfield does more damage to muters, and it will prioritize air units that can attack ground over Zerglings now. Looks like that frame rate finally cleaning itself up there. The game's suddenly looking very smooth. And those Banshees speeding around the left side, looking for any harassment they can get. Rain is going for a melee upgrade, Bane Speed, and plus one air weapons. He's going to be making just tons of muters and Zerglings. So these days, the Zerglings will not take the lock on. 
if the Cyclone's within range of the Muta, it'll always prioritize that. And that's going to make the Micro much easier for Gumio. We haven't really seen anyone test this and put it to the limit by trying to go mass Muta against it. Mutas are hitting Gumio's third base, but Rain is going to lose his fourth by the looks of it. Cyclones are in there. Cyclones in the picture in picture, kiting the Mutalisks, picking a few of those Mutas off. Three Mutas go down. The fourth base of Rain goes down. Rain is fifth in the top left, is dying to Banshees right now. At the same time, Mutas in the picture in picture, getting pushed back by Missile Turrets and Cyclones. Rain is Mutas have to back off. He takes out 11 SCVs. He is up 20 workers, but his fifth base gets cancelled in the top left of the map, the Banshees as well. Great multitask for Gumio, and Gumio pulls his army back. But remember, Gumio, he doesn't have his fourth up yet. Killing these hatcheries is good. Three base first, three base is good. But if Reyna can re-establish those hatcheries, he will be in a good position. Reyna doesn't have macro hatcheries though. So he's in big trouble right now. Reyna needs macro hatcheries right now. Playing Ling Bane, you can't support it. Now I've talked about the EU hubris before. What is the EU hubris? I don't know why I'm saying Huber is so weirdly. Um, the, basically, they believe that if you hit your lava injects properly, you don't need macro hatcheries or you need them very rarely. The problem is, if you lose your fourth and fifth base in a chaotic game like this, suddenly you float a lot of minerals, and that's what you got to watch out for. Oh, Rainer goes way too deep. Oh no! Look at his camera. Oh my god, you could see him kind of going, oh, that hurt. He just went way too deep and lost so many Mutalisks. Gumio with Mass Cyclone Elbat says, get some. I'm here with the power of Terran guns. We got metal. We got mechanical armored formations moving in. And you and your dirty bugs are going to get exterminated. Rainer does not have much answer to this now. His Muta count is way too low. It's all about overwhelming the Cyclones. He's going to try to jump on top. But you can see, he's not even doing that. He just picks off the Hellbats and pulls back. He's got to defend one of these bases. The Banshees are going to deny it one more time. But there is a crazy amount of metal encroaching on the Zerg territory. The biological life forms being cleared steadily. Cyclones locking onto those muters is devastating. Rainer does get knocked back to three base. And I got to say, where are the roaches? Where are the ravages? It's just so silly to try and play this style. I like muters, but I still feel like why not open up with some roaches to defend the early hellbats, then go heavy into muters? I guess the argument is that's a waste of gas. You want the critical mass of muters to overwhelm the cyclones. So I'm kind of arguing both sides. I actually can see it working for Rainer. And on such a big map, muters is so mobile. And it takes a while for them to push it. I can actually see this style making sense, but Gumio did so good with those Hellions in the early game. He's been denying his bases. And I do think Rainer, rather than backstabbing the battle mech, should have focused more on the front on fights. He needed to keep that fourth and fifth base alive. And now he's actually massively out supplied. The Banshees are going to smash the ground. He's got, I don't know if he has enough muters to contest the Cyclones. He's got some Ling Bane coming in, but the Banshees gun most of it down before it connects. The Cyclone locks are pretty massive. Uh, he's going to try and stutter step those muters on top. Great Ling Flank! Great Ling Flank from Rainer! That's the sort of move that can still completely turn these games in your favor. Uh, but he is so far behind. Can he defend the Cyclones? Going to pick off three more Mutalisks there. Ow! Hell, that's in the natural. The Lings and the Muters trying to clean that up. Gumiho engaging in a scrappy war. Takes out six drones, but doesn't wipe out the fourth or the fifth. Banshee's in the top side. Ooh, we're picking off drones. We can see the drone killed tab. And it looks like one more drone. So 11 workers go down there, but the Banshees do fall. Rain down to 59 workers versus an 83 SCV Terran player with a 5th command center finishing. And that is not where you want to be as a Zerg. You are making the cost inefficient bugs. The beastly bugs that are they're, they're not cost efficient, but you can mass produce them if you have enough money. You're meant to have an economic advantage for that. In this case, the Battle Mech player is the one swarming the Banshees. Oh no! Get out of there, Rainer! Rainer, run, run, run! Run, run, roo! Run, run, roo! Those Banshees are gonna make you poo! Uh, that's my song for what the drones say when the Banshees are chasing them, guys. It's a bedtime tale. They tell their children to make sure they mine their minerals before they go to sleep. The Banshees on the left and the right. Most of them even escaping. Very good micro by Gumio using that Banshee speed. His mouth agape right now in that pixel pixel cam that we've got there his whole left shoulder is still of course disappearing as he plays 12 more drones are going down uh, nip and ronald indeed coming in there uh muters going after the banshee let's go but this harassment is just non-stop and behind it two two upgrades are about to come in plus two vehicle armor kicks in and that means the muters and the zerglings are going to really struggle plus two armor upgrade is really helpful against ling muter 
For those who don't know, Lings and Mutas are really high damage, frequent damage units, and especially the way Muta damages bounce, and each bounce does 33% of the previous one. Armor upgrades scale super well versus both of these units. Lings, because they attack so fast with low damage, so each damage point you reduce is massive. Mutas, because like I said, the bounce damage. Hellbats morph, they do get taken out by the Mutas, but even a little bit of delay on mining time, roasting a few Zerglings is not bad. And that is a maxed out Biomech army. Servos on the upgrade tab. 3-3 three, three on the upgrade tab. Banshees causing utter chaos. And my god, that is a lot of Hellions. And guess what? The Mutas need to dive on the Cyclones. Otherwise, they're going to get picked off like that. Man, even there, three or four Mutas just went down. These new Cyclones are fantastic at taking down Mutas. And the Mutas are going to dive. The Mutas do dive on top, but no, he pulls back again. He can't do this in and out. I feel like Reyna needs to just jump on top and overwhelm, but man, yeah, again, these Banshees finding his bases. He's in such a scrappy spot. He can't afford the Spore Crawlers. Reyna is in, in the doo-doo right now, and it's, of course, Gumio gets the mass lock. Those Cyclones kiting for days, even with the stutter step. I mean, he can eventually overwhelm, but he's going to lose everything else. It's like, hey, 11 Cyclones versus 22 Muters. Obviously, the Muters are going to win eventually. But even the plus two armor making those Cyclones do an incredibly good account for themselves. And Reyna looking a little frustrated as he has to GG. And there's the close-up <laughs> of which you still can't make out any facial features. All right, guys, let's go into game number two. No command center first. This time it's going to be a Marine. Ooh, -ee, a Marine. Okay, you're going to try and push back the Overlord is Gumio. Curious to see what he's got. Reyna going for the spawning pool first. Doing a Zergling pressure. And, uh... Ooh. Okay, Marine's gonna push back the Oval... Oh, that Overlord's twerking its booty! That Marine's been out on military deployment for too long! He falls for it! No, it's a bait! Get out of there! Okay, he does turn and run. Hopefully he hasn't already stepped too deep into enemy territory. Oh, good pullback by Rainer on the weak Zergling. The Drilly Boys are coming for the save! Can they save the Marines? Oh, nice pullback by Gumio! Only loses one SCV, and he's got a third Marine out. Who the hell builds three Marines with no add-on? Gumiho does, and it's perfect. <laughs> because otherwise, that would have been much harder to defend. Rain is dropping a Roach Warren? What? That's an oddly timed Roach Warren, guys. I don't know if I can get behind that Roach Warren timing. Is this just like an eight Roach Pressure with no link speed? I, I feel like it's too early for defensive Roach, but it's too late for a Roach Rush. I don't like Rain's build. I'm not sure what he's doing with this. That's a bizarre Roach Warren timing. I can't be the only one who thinks that's really weird. Uh, great defense early game for Gumiho, though. Um, six Roaches on the way. Are we going to build even more, Rainer? Are you crazy? Are you crazy, Rainer? Seven Roaches! Oh my god, this is like a Ragnarok style build, but very bizarre timing. It's not going to hit to like 420. And uh, a Liberator's on the way, a few Marines building. If the Hellions see the Roaches, he's going to have so much time to respond on this big map. The Lings try to distract him, but he's got... Uh, the Barracks is already on the reactor. He's got plenty of time to get a bunker at the Natural. If, if Gumio instantly throws a bunker on the Natural, he, he will lose, like, no units to this. He doesn't throw a bunker down, he just starts a siege tank. Um, that might be a little cocky from Gumiho, but I guess he's just planning to let the siege tank defend. He figures siege tank and bunker take the same, same time to build. Tank should completely shut this down so it should be good enough maybe just pulls the scvs to the high ground temporarily fair enough pretty good call by gumio i think as that tank's gonna pop soon after this arrives and definitely questionable opening from rainer because gumio is very smart he'll just pull up the liberator can go straight across the map to try and get some damage and actually oh look at this he even moves down with the tank and the marines and now the tank siege is up the liberator is going to just pick off the overlord he says hey I'm, i'll just take the free damage here and that Liberator can go across the map now. Very nice play here. Yeah, Rainer hitting really slow with this Roach Pressure. Not a great build order for him. Especially not with the Hellion scouting it as early as they did. I think he thought that Gumio might not be scouting very quickly with Hellions because he had those three Marines building early. He's like, oh, you don't have a Reactor. Therefore, you won't have Hellions, which means I can surprise you with this. But instead, it was the opposite. The Hellion spotted it moving out. Now Liberator's getting some little bits of damage on the overlords but of course that's very low impact damage and he's gonna go for a tank drop gumiho you troll <laughs> guys he's gonna drop unseaged tanks to pick off scvs 
This is so cool. I think the, the thing is, they're actually really good at killing roaches and ravages as well. This man is literally, he's jumped inside the matrix. He's turned himself into a bunch of pixels and he's got some next level plays. This is amazing. Two, dr a drone gets picked off. Goes, does pick up. There is a queen. Oh, watch out, watch out. Oh, queen's on all sides. Rainer getting some good damage. Siege tanks can pick off the queen if you're not careful, though. He's just going to pick away from those ravages. And uh, the Stim, third command center, second and third barracks, all on the way behind this for Gummy Bro. Three more barracks, four more barracks coming down. So, yeah, he's going to go five barracks, three bays, double engineering bay, all of the stuff going down at once. What I love about Gummy O is sometimes he's so busy microing his units, and then he macros in the way I suggest that like low level players macro where it's like, I'm like, you know, technically you're going to see Maru build a second barracks, put it on the add-on, third barracks, swap it on the add-on, fourth and fifth barracks, swap on the add-ons. Sometimes it's better to just make four barracks and then build four reactors all at once. And Gumio likes to do that sometimes. I love it. There's an elegance to just basically getting everything done in one go while you hyper focus on the micro. Good dodges on the Biles, but Rainer's doing a good job of zoning, and he's up to 62 workers. How can Rainer always have such trash openings and then just get way ahead anyway? He's up 26 supply. Yeah, there's Roach Ravager, so it's not the greatest supply, but the third base is only just finished for Gumio. He hasn't floated it down out yet for a while. He's only now floating it over. Hasn't even made an orbital. And Rainer's getting a fourth base up, looking really solid for Rainer in this game. But I do wonder, does he stay on Roach Ravager or does he swap into Zerglings? We'll find that out very shortly. If that link speed doesn't start up, he's got to stay Roach Ravager for a little bit longer. It's a lot of unupgraded tanks and marines hanging out for Gumio. An odd ball of units. The Roach Ravager on the right side. Rainer really likes the Roach Ravager opening because it gives him a lot of control. He will open up with plus one range as well as Carapace. Interesting. I feel like maybe he could kill Gumio with a big one one timing. Gumio is not producing a siege tank right now. A little bit of a gap in his production. If you end up dying to Roach Ravager, you will always look back at the replay and go, oh, I missed building a siege tank here or there. That's always something you regret if you die to Roach Ravager because there's so many moments when you die to Roach Ravager where you're like, oh, if I just had one more siege tank. I can totally turn a fight around. Overseer is going to get picked off by some of these marines, but stimming quite a few of them. It's a good marine count. 1-1 one, in one shields isn't done yet. Liberator goes by into the main. Careful, Gumio! Oh, no! No combat shields! Oh, my God. And he even gets a bile on the medevac. And the Liberator gets shot down. Rainer is out multitasking. Gumio right now. Gumio getting a little sloppy. Down 40 supply despite shutting down the early roach pressure. This is kind of wild, dude. Okay. Infestation pits on the way. Eight more drones are in production. Ooh, one siege tank does go down. The roach right. There's no there's support. There's no support. Rain is just gonna kill him. Okay, there are more marines coming back. The shields is so late though. Oh man. Rainer gets rid of most of the tanks and he's on 88 workers. Oh, but what? You don't want to lose these ravages. I like those defensive vials. I do like those defensive vials. Carapace is finished, plus one range is not. The marines are hungry, they're horny, they chase down some roaches. Where's the link speed? Guys, Rainer never made link speed, right? He's making Banelings and Zerg, Banling Nest and Zerglings, but I don't think he realizes he's actually so high on drones right now. He's going in Festers, which is great here. Link speed starts up. Okay, Rainer does remember link speed. That would have been a disaster. Gumio has not started 2 2. Oh man, Gumio, if you don't start 2 2, you are not going to be able to scale up in this game. He's got a fourth command center, two more barracks on the way. We're going to have an eight barracks, three barracks, sorry, do come down now. Plus two weapons does start up. Plus two carapace, melee, link speed, banely nest, infestors, and a hive all on the way for Rainer. Rainer's large and in charge in this game, but that is a lot of roach, uh, a lot of marines. There's only a few roaches and ravages right now. The scan. If Gumio is paying attention, he might realize that's a very small army, and he could probably take that fight with his marines alone. I actually think he could just gun through that road trip. Rainer is building 10 more drones? Rainer is so disgustingly greedy. Remember, guys, this is what Oliveira caught him out for on Gresfin in the World Championship. Game 4, round of 8. Rainer went Roach Ravager, a very supply and efficient comp, and then made 95 drones. And a maxed out Terran push can absolutely annihilate a Zerg who doesn't have enough army supply. Rainer being way too greedy in this game. I always talk about how Serral's a very safe player. He would never play the way Rainer's playing. Rainer plays very risky, which means if you give him any room to breathe, he will always overwhelm you. But right now, killing just a hatchery, not that important. He's got a new fifth base in the top. He's building an Ultra Cavern. 
And if Reyna can find ways to trade off this Roach Ravager in a not terrible manner, he'll be in a good spot. Double Lib Harass for Gumiho. Gumiho, though, is a very good bio player. Don't get me wrong. If it comes out to an all-out multitasking war, Reyna is way faster than he is. But Gumiho is incredibly smart. He's very clever. And he plays very unique styles that Reyna might not be as practiced against. Liberator in the top side should be getting dealt with. That one, oh, does go down to the queen. Watch out for the fungal. Only two infestors, only two fungals available. Gumio is aware of it, but Gumio is now maxed at a 25 army supply lead. The vipers aren't here. The ultras aren't here. And a lot of his army is in Roach Ravager. Trash army for Reyna. Reyna has to give up this angle and backstab. If he tries to fight into a choke point, the exact same thing will happen that happened on Gresfin. And he's attacking up the choke point. No, 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 no. His army, the tank spread goes so far back. Fungal only hits a few medevacs and those marines. Oh, the Baylings. The Baylings get a few of the marines. Can they get some more? Yeah, they get okay hits, but not good enough. There's more bio tank on the left side. This is a pretty good fight for Gumio. Is it good enough though? I feel like Reyna... Uh, he's going to lose the base, I believe. That's not the end of the world. He's taking two bases in the top. He knows he's going to lose this base. He's just trying to hold on as long as he can. Rain has already dropped two hatcheries in the top left side of the map. As long as he doesn't lose the workers, he can remax and actually go really well. gumio has got to be careful to not chase too far. Rainer is a wily mother trucker. Where a lot of other Zergs would crumble, he has such remax potential because of that disgusting economy. Drones transferring to the top left of the map. But this is a big indentation in the creep. And surprisingly, Rainer's creep spread in the top left is not that impressive. And you know that's where the fighting is going to rotate to at some point. Yes, right now, this is urgent dealing with this push. But it's going to focus on the top left at some point in the future. Vipers are getting blinding clouds. I actually would have loved to see Gumio pull back from here. But instead, he is going all out on this push. 2-2 two, two upgrades versus 1-1-2-4 one, one, Zerg. Lingbane Ultra cuts off the reinforce. Vipers are going for it. Here we go. Blinding Cloud's landing. One, two tanks do get Blinding Cloud. Only two tanks. Interestingly, big fungal on those Marines. The Lingbane Ultra flank comes in a little bit late to the party. He needs to get on top of these siege tanks. If he can't get rid of the tanks... Oh, Gumio holds the fort. He holds the position. He says, thou shalt not pass. He holds the door. And the horde of Zerg zombies cannot get in there, mate. Dude, he keeps trying to go in and defend. He doesn't want to lose his melee upgrade. Plus two melee is going to go down. Great catch for Gumio. Gumio relentless with this push. And he is starting to dive in forwards. It feels like Rainer is not just playing the normal Gumio. This man has merged in himself with the Matrix. He is not just a mirage. He is a partly synaptic organism made up of microbots that have formed into some sort of semi-conscious ai fuel being. Gumio's tank spread does get flanked by Zergis from behind though. Rainer looks like he might be able to clear this position up. Great fungal. The Viper does go down. Uh, the Infestor, sorry, but the Viper does get a good blinding cloud. And finally, Rainer deals with the push that has caused him so much trouble in this game. And I have to say, guys, if you play high economy, low army supply, you should not be fighting front on. I do think this was a mistake for Rainer in the previous engagements. But oh my god, the bio is still there. The Queens versus the Liberators, the Ultras. I can't believe Gumio is still on the front. This might be an overextension. The Ultras are able to overwhelm a bunch of them fall oh my god this fight's so close but i think it's turning in rainer's favor rainer does take out a lot of these units these faster smoother smaller ultralisks are getting gunned down by marauders nonetheless gumio is down 30 supply at the end of that though and it feels like rainer smoothly transferring economy to the top left of the map is still okay but his natural did go down and his gas income is very low rainer is going to need to take new gases i realize that because i'm sitting here in the comfort of my home watching He's playing at 400, 500 APM a, a minute. A minute? It's actions per minute. Four, yes. That's <laughs> 500 actions per minute per minute. My God. Great analysis, pig. Uh, anyway, I'll stop with the meta commentary. Hatchery on the natural is going up. But yeah, I don't think Rainer necessarily realizes he's short on gas. So he's got to be careful with that. He's still at 86 drones versus 70 SCVs. Notice that Gumio doesn't have the epic late game to fall back on. Gumio is a tempo-based TVZ player. We don't see these guys very often. It was very common. This was how you played TVZ five, six, seven years ago. It was pressure, 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 finding timing attack into your next timing attack. But you never played that late game mass command center style, right? 10 command centers, ghosts, planetary, sensor towers everywhere. Army fight! Big army fight! Whoa! Okay, I was worried the observer wasn't going to show us that, but it looks like Gumio realized what's up. He did stim in time, pullback. He's got a unit, drop, double drop going in on the right side. 
gets a hatchery snipe rainer is still just on uh five bases effectively mining his natural dream mining he's building an infester and a spire i do think brood lords are amazing for winning frontal fights and breaking heavy tank lines but i don't think you want to go more than four or five brood lords just enough to basically make their tanks friendly fire because this map is a pretty big spread. Broodlords are very immobile. And I think this is going to be decided by mobility. And who can control the middle of the map is going to be very important here on Ancient Cistern. Big army on the left side coming on forwards. The Ling Bane Ultra. Parasitic Bomb on the Medivacs. Oh, splits off one of the Medivacs. The other one a little bit slower. Medivacs do get bruised, but none of them going down. Bio going to chase onto Creep right now. Is Gumio just on pure bio, or is he actually bringing his siege tanks up here as well? We'll find out in the moment. He's deep on creep, trying to pull back up that ramp somewhere where Rainer cannot chase him unless he's got a lot of blinding clouds. Double drop in the natural. Picture in picture, we see that in the bottom right. It did get defended by some Zerglings. I think Rainer needs to go around this army. Like I said, I think he needs to do a lot more backstabbing because Gumio is setting up his whole army in one position of the map for these big fights, and Rainer can't quite find the angles he needs. I feel like Gumio is using the architecture of the map so fantastically, and I don't know if you're ever going to engage into this cost efficiently. Rain is going to go for it anyway, but his units are getting stuck on that ledge. That left side army is doing so well for Gumio. The Infestor gets a big fungal just before it goes down. The Ultra is chomping on those bio units, but the double drop's gone back in. Gumio holds position on the left, and he redrops the right side. Gumio's got bank. Rainer does not. He's going to lose two more drones of Spork Roller. The hatchery on the right side is going to go down. Great production from the Chinese crew with that picture-in-picture picture disappearing instantly. Amazing job. Guys, SC Boy are such legends. The guys that run this, uh, name of their organization, of course, SC Boy. Hats off to them for running the World Team League and doing such a good job. I love it. Such a treat to be able to cast these games. Rain is looking a little frustrated. I think he's got to start doing something to attack that bottom right. He can't just be reactively defending this area. The ledges on this map are really deadly when the Terran sets it up just right. A lot of those medevacs very weak up here. Rain is still trying to hang on to that economy. Seems like he's given up on the bottom right side of the map completely. But Gumiho, he's got a good income. He's maxed out and he's adding ghosts in here, which is sniping ultras. Oh, that's very costly. Bio dropping in the back. There was an SCV in there on auto repair that's been repairing his medevac, guys. <laughs> I don't even know if Gumio did that on purpose or not. But did you know, if you have an SCV on auto repair inside a medevac, it can actually repair the other units inside the medevac. Can't repair the medevac itself unless it's unloaded, but that was hilarious to see. The bio drop being so annoying on the right side of the map. The bio here started stepping in, trying to bait Rainer into some bad fights. Gumio a little too slow to react, so I think that was perfectly fine for Rainer. Rainer's lings will take care of these marauders eventually, but guys, what are the melee upgrades to up to? Wait, wait, did he never finish making his plus two melee? I know he doesn't have plus three. They, oh, here we go. Ling Bane Ultra going to attack from that side. Blinding Cloud on some of the bio on the north. That tank on the low ground will go down to the Ultras. The Banelings are hitting those ghosts, but now that there's no Banelings, uh-oh. Pop, pop, pop. The Ultras get sniped. And guys, I think Rainer might still only have plus one melee. If they click on an Ultra, we could see. I'm pretty sure... Okay, okay. Chat's telling me. There we go. Plus two melee is finished. He doesn't have plus three, though. And there is, of course, plus three armor on those bio units. So these Lings, not as powerful as they could be. The Lings getting a bit of a wrap around. The Raider will not go down without a fight. And it looks like his first big victory in a battle. God, those units with their personal medevac healing in the corner. They survived for a long time. But Raider finally pushes Gumio back. Gumio does not have the giant mass orbital command centers. But he's still got more bank than Raider. Raider. I think he'll probably need... I don't know what he needs here, man. He's building Infestors, Vipers, Lings, and Ultras. The new Ultras are a bit better, but they still can get focused down by the Marauders. The Ghost can snipe him. And Gumio, with so many Medivacs, is being absolutely relentless. I've got to wonder, wouldn't a few Corruptors have changed the course of this game? Imagine if, during all these fights, there was just a couple Corruptors working on those Medivacs. Parasitic Bomb does some damage, but it really is so low impact. Whereas a few Corruptors, I think, could have actually been wearing these Medivacs down and making a massive difference. Oh, the Drilly Boy says, taste my drill! As he tries to solo the hatchery on the right side of the map. Gumio just has too many numbers now. Rainer doesn't have the numbers to engage, even with Banelings connecting. He cannot keep it up. And the metamorphosized Matrix Ho. Gumi, Gumi X. Matrix, Gumi, Gumi Ho inside the Matrix. He wins the series. Two to zero.
beautiful play by Gumiharu. 